Thank you for joining me on this Saturday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. The flood threat will increase as we uh, get into the upcoming week for the Caribbean and we have just a train of tropical waves moving in, a couple strong and yes, there is the possibility of development down the road watching this wave in particular and that one back behind it. We have one tropical wave moving through the Caribbean now and Gulf of Mexico as well. We're going to see a lot more moisture building in the Gulf of Mexico as we go over the next couple of weeks. So we'll keep an eye out for some signs of development, keeping an eye on the uh, Gulf Coast of the United States, back through parts of Mexico. And again, watching over toward the Bahamas, up toward Bermuda, closer to home this time of year. We're going to see a lot of moisture building. So as these tropical waves come off Africa, they move into an environment that has more moisture with it, and there could eventually be some development. I'm expecting a more active end to August as we've been talking about together. Now, let me show you what we're dealing with. Again, these tropical waves, I was highlighting them the last couple of videos. And the big question will be, will they survive the weekend? Because again, we have a lot of dry air behind it. Here's one, here's another. These are the two bigger tropical waves. There's another one that is gonna slide in over the next couple days. I'll show you that uh, with our computer models. But these are the two tropical waves in particular that I'm watching out for signs of development. Now, there's still a lot of dry air around these. See kind of that orangey shading? So the environment is not conducive for development in the short term, and that's a good thing. And this dry air has been eating away at this first tropical wave. So we'll see if it survives uh, a lot the next couple days. Now, it'll survive as a tropical wave, but it may be a very weak one if this dry air continues to eat away at that. Now, here's the big picture. Dry air is not necessarily tied to the Saharan dust. You could actually have rain around and Saharan dust at the same time. With that, I wanna show you another surge of dust moving in. Here's the dust as we go throughout the day today. Uh, in particular, the Northeastern Caribbean and really the Eastern Caribbean as a whole, Barbados, uh, St. Lucia, really North, Dominica, some of that dust, it is gonna be thick over toward Anguilla. Watching out for areas of dust as well. Belize over toward Jamaica and the ABC Islands, Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire. We've had a lot of that Saharan dust around that does reduce the air quality. Could give you some issues if you already have some of those uh, breathing issues. So just a heads up there. Now, here's what's going on. Here's the Caribbean and get back through the Gulf of Mexico, watching these strong tropical waves. Let me take you out in time. Now, I'm gonna highlight this in a second. This is by the time we get into Monday. This is one tropical wave moving into the Caribbean. So we're gonna see some rain. This is not one of the stronger ones, but there's some rain here. I'm watching out here. Now, it's just gonna stack up. We've got one tropical wave moving in on Monday, and then look what happens as we go forward. Let me stop the clock right here. This is by the time we get into Wednesday. The tropical wave that I've been watching for development looks like it kinda wants to make a little resurgence. The dryer eats away at it, but look at this by Wednesday, a surge of moisture anywhere from Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, not organized. But again, this is going to lead to some flooding because we had some flooding last week in South Trinidad. We had a lot of the flooding. So you see the green right there. This is again Wednesday. So my concern for flooding is getting a little higher across the Caribbean and then pulling forward into the end of the week. Now this is out on time. This is going to change some. This is almost a week from now. But you see again, a lot of moisture overall, more strong tropical waves coming off. But here's that tropical wave that I was watching again, very close to Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican, Republic trying to move into Jamaica. Now, at this point, again, it's still a flood potential as we get into next week and conditions are a little more conducive as this moves either uh, anywhere from the Bahamas uh, down through near Jamaica, conditions are more conducive for development late term. So there is a slight chance, not a big chance, but a slight chance this spins up potentially into a classified system. So I'll keep an eye on that. And again, another little surge of moisture right here. So things are starting to get busier. When I did my August forecast, that seems to be holding right on track that mid to late month things would just be picking up. And we're gradually seeing signs of that. Now, as far as this stronger tropical wave is concerned, I just showed you the American model. That brings it back through the Caribbean. The European model has it a little bit more to the north. Both keep it weak in the short term, but both will bring additional rainfall Bahamas south. And again, that means that flood threat will be higher as we get into that upcoming week. Now, as we go throughout the uh, season, we have a ton of these tropical waves. This is common. Now, the key is to see which ones are going to try to develop. That's what I'm kind of doing behind the scenes. Each season, we get about 55 
to 65 tropical waves moving off. Hurricane season's June 1st to November 30th, and these tropical waves start generally in early to mid-May, so it is common, but again, August, September, and October, that's when there's a higher likelihood of them spinning up into tropical storms and hurricanes. Next name on the list, on the Atlantic side, and I wanna to get to powerful Hurricane Dora in just a second, Emily is the next name on the list, Franklin and Gert. No signs of Emily now, but again, we've got those healthier tropical waves out there. Long term, there could be some development out of those. Now, watching some of the rain across parts of Mexico, we've seen some spotty showers overnight. I mentioned that in yesterday's video, even over toward Haiti, with this tropical wave that is sliding by right now near Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, we had a few showers and storms overnight in some spots. As we go throughout the day, it's gonna be spotty showers and storms. This is by five o'clock today. If you're looking at a spot where you are and you see a little bit of that green, that's where we have that chance of some of the scattered showers and storms. So kind of scattered about for today, parts of Central America, and again, in through the Caribbean, watching some of the shower storms popping up. Cuba could see a passing shower in the Cayman Islands. By the way, I coach basketball. I'm about to run out and do that and coach my team. We play a team today from the Cayman Islands, so wish all of us luck as we pull forward here into Sunday. Now, here's what I'm watching on Sunday, the Eastern Caribbean, and that next tropical wave moving in, this is not the bigger one behind it, but look at that, and again, that's gonna start to work in Sunday into Monday, so Barbados, for example, on Sunday, we're going to see that rain chance bumping up. And then as we get into early in the week, this tropical wave slides in. You see more of that rain with it. So that's the first tropical wave. Then we have the two stronger tropical waves back behind it. And that's why as we get into next week, they start stacking up. And that means we're going to see some flooding in spots in the Caribbean next week. So I'm going to continue to watch that very carefully. I'll keep an eye on those stronger tropical waves back behind it. But you see, as we get into Monday, that rain chance is going to start to get higher and then we'll see some rounds of rain by next week. Now as we work our way out into the eastern Pacific, a couple things going on. This here is Dora. Winds right now are 110 miles per hour. That's about 177 kilometers an hour. So again, a little bit of weakening overnight. It was a category four hurricane uh, yesterday. And then watching this area here, which may develop, it looks like it's trying to become a tropical depression, could as soon as this morning. Now, here's the deal with this. It is going to swing to the north. And I always keep an eye on that. Again, watching Mexico, southwest Mexico, we've got a little bit of that, uh, the flood potential. Watching out for, of course, the higher seas. We're seeing that coastal overwash in spots, getting some of the coastal flooding. It is going to swing kind of back to the north eventually uh, so it'll develop in the short term but long term it will eventually weakening let me get to that in a second here's Dora here's Hawaii okay so as expected we've been talking about this for days and days this will stay a classified system should stay a hurricane over the next uh, four days or so at least but again, everything I'm seeing keeps it south of Hawaii, but in Hawaii, keeping a very close eye on that, you see the computer models on this all in good agreement. Now you look at these computer models and you say, hey, I'm in Southern California, I'm in parts of Mexico, is this going to develop and head to me? Well, uh, the, those squiggly lines only tell part of the story. As we go out in time, uh, as this gets a little bit more off to the uh, west and west-northwest, there's gonna be a lot of weakening here. So short-term development, then eventually weakening, and then kind of falling apart, whatever's left of it may try to work its way back toward Mexico. Uh, shouldn't really even see much in the way of rain back towards Southern uh, California with it. It's going to fall apart. And again, as we look at Dora, they'll be weakening as this is south of Hawaii. They'll be weakening much cooler water ahead for Dora. So watching it though, keep an eye on any changes. So Dora, now that one, that blob that is just off the coast or kind of along the coast of Southwest Mexico, that will be Eugene if it does get a name. It could get a name uh, as we go through the weekend. So Eugene is the next name on the list. The Eastern Pacific has a different list of names. So as you hear different names, again, we're talking about Dora. Dora is on the Eastern Pacific, not the Atlantic Basin. The Atlantic Basin uh, is comprised of the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, that first tropical wave works in as we get into Sunday and Monday. Barbados, I mentioned, we're going to see the rain moving in first. So 50% chance tomorrow, up to that 60% percent chance on Sunday and that rain chance gradually increasing Sunday Monday late Monday it's going to get even higher Monday night we'll see some rain moving in in St. Lucia because we have tropical wave number one moving in and then in Jamaica 50 percent chance of rain Jamaica 50 uh, percent chance on Monday spotty this weekend Jamaica we're going to be watching down the road for the week ahead for those stronger tropical waves that are going to move into the Caribbean and we'll see how they hang together he showed that American model kind of sweeps it right through the uh, Caribbean so watching even 
even over toward Belize by the end of the week. Right now, just an isolated chance of a shower storm, a 30% chance through the weekend. Trinidad and Tobago, the flood threat is going to be higher, especially because we're at the critical point in spots. We have not, uh, or we had the flooding last week. The ground has saturated some of the river levels. They are still up. Now, scattered showers and storms the next two days possible. But as we go through the week, it's going to be one tropical wave after another. I'm tracking it for you. I'll stay on top of that. Grenada, rain chance tomorrow and Monday up to about 40%, 50% chance tomorrow. St. Vincent, the Grenadines, 40% chance Monday. But Tuesday, it's going to be higher with tropical wave uh, one moving in. Cayman Islands, rain chance about 30 to 40% as we go through the weekend into early next week. Isolated passing showers, a couple thunderstorms possible as we work our way into the Bahamas. Same thing, Turks and Caicos. Rain chance this weekend at 30%. 30% chance today in Dominica. But again, Dominica, as I mentioned, St. Lucia, uh, Barbados, Guadeloupe, uh, Martinique. Uh, we're going to be seeing that rain chance getting higher, especially on Monday. So that'll be the start. And then again, you have those stronger tropical waves back behind that. Puerto Rico, rain chance higher tomorrow and Monday. We're going to see some scattered showers and storms around. And then I'll be watching out for the flood threat for next week. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, 30% chance today a 40% chance tomorrow of a passing shower. Rain chance 50% today, tomorrow, but again, in the Dominican Republic, thunderstorms will be a threat even overnight. Haiti, the same thing. So we're watching out for some isolated flooding in spots, 40% chance of rain and thunderstorms as we go over the next couple days in Haiti. That forecast has panned out. We have a couple around right now. Uh, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat holding at about a 30% chance of rain over the next three days. Could get a little higher on Tuesday. Antigua, Barbuda, same thing. Kind of watching deeper into the upcoming week for that rain chance to get higher. Anguilla, rain chance 20%. We need to get some rain as we get into the week ahead uh, mid and late week we're going to see that rain chance getting higher so I'm watching that for us in Anguilla St. Martin St. Bastatia St. Bart's uh, rain chance about 30 percent and then minimal as we get over toward Curacao bumps up a notch though tomorrow and Monday a 20 percent chance very limited today in Aruba most of the moisture is uh, well up to the north Costa Rica 30 40 percent chance so the rain chance has been down a bit but it bounces back up as we work our way into next week Guyana today a 40 percent chance, 30% chance on Sunday, and then we'll see some passing showers possible. Suriname the next two days through the weekend, a 30% chance. Northern Venezuela through the weekend, rain chance 30 to 40%. So gradually getting busier overall. Multiple tropical waves out there. Caribbean flood threat as we get into the week ahead. I showed you why. We're going to have one tropical wave working in Monday, but then the stronger tropical waves that will be behind it. And then I'm going to watch out for long-term development, potentially Western Caribbean, potentially Southern Gulf of Mexico, Bay of uh, Campeche, possibility of some development late next week. But either way, as we see these stronger tropical waves, things get getting more active in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to have a more active finish to the month. So plenty to track with that. Keep me posted on what's going on where you are. A lot of you are sharing this uh, channel with your friends, family. Thanks for doing that. I hope you have a good weekend ahead.